Hey guys, Carson here with Tools with Tools. On this episode, we're going to do something that I wanted to do for so long. We're going to put a train horn in my truck. So we can take a little bit of time to talk about the equipment that we're going to be using. So I just pulled this off of Amazon. I think it was like 130 something bucks, Amazon Prime. All this is is just the compressor, a tank, some lines, it comes with the button and a relay and all that stuff. So basically this is everything we need for the onboard air system. And this is the, the horn. This is a Wolo Siberian Express, I think. I, it's been a while since I've seen the box. Uh, a friend of mine gave it to me. In fact, Rob, from that episode that we uh, swapped the Duramax into his GMC Sierra, um, he gave me that as a thanks. So we're going to go ahead and swap it into my GMC Sierra. Tailgates are God's gift to mankind. It's like a portable workbench. Working on tailgates is great. I wanted to talk a little bit about how this system is going to work. So there's a couple of key components. The first being the air compressor. Now the air compressor is going to be connected to this tank. What happens is when the air compressor kicks on, it compresses the air and shoves it into this holding tank. We're going to be at about 150 PSI for this system. Now, once we've got this tank pressurized, we have a positive pressure line that goes from here to our horns, because they're air horns. We've got a little solenoid right here. Now the way that this works is it always has positive pressure to this solenoid. There's a positive and a negative that will connect to a switch. Once we push the switch and the, uh, the circuit is connected, what happens is that solenoid opens and allows air to pass through the horns. So that's how that works. So I think first things first, I'm just gonna get everything unboxed. There's some fittings that I need to put on the compressor tank and I'll talk you guys through that. I'm just gonna find somewhere to mount this in the compressor. I'll mount the horn. I'm hoping we can mount it under the hood. Uh, then I'll start running airlines, and then I will work on uh, electrical. We're getting ready to drop this in the truck. We've got our compressor hooked up to our air tank. Now there's a couple fittings that this came with. This on the top, what this is right here is a pressure switch. So it tells the compressor to turn on if the tank pressure gets lower than 86 pounds, and then it tells it to turn off when the pressure in the tank reaches 105 pounds. Uh, I thought this was a 150 pound system. It's about a hundred pound. It's fine for what we're doing. This is a safety relief valve in case the, uh, the pump gets stuck on and the tank gets over pressured, that'll pop or you can pull up on that and release it. On the bottom here, we have a drain. Over time, there's gonna get some water in this tank. So every once in a while, you can get in there and unscrew that. And then on the back side, we have our outfitting for the hose that's gonna go to our horn. So now I'm gonna get ready and drop this in. I know where we're gonna mount everything. Getting pretty close. Everything's gonna fit under the hood. I'm pretty excited about that. In order to mount the horn solid, I had to fabricate my own mount. I used some flat stock, drilled holes to make points to attach the bracket, and welded my mount together. So we've got our bracket welded together. I'm gonna mark these holes, drill it out, and then we can go ahead and mount it. It's snowing. <sighs> I hate winter. Well, since it's snowing, I think I'm gonna take a break and go to the hardware store and get some nuts and bolts to mount the horn, and then I need to get a, a switch too, like a push button switch for the horn to go into the cap. So I'm gonna go do some errands. Hopefully this stops and we can get this done. Just got back from the parts store. We were able to get everything we needed and we even found some cool stuff to help us wire this up a little bit better. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put the mount in. Once the mount is in, uh, I'm actually gonna hook this plastic airline up to the horn, mount the horn, and then we're gonna go ahead and do all the wiring. So I'm just using self-tapping screws um, to attach this. So I'm not having to drill holes and through holes. It's pretty good actually. Self-tapping screws are one of my favorite things. Well, we got all the wiring done, the relay's all wired up. The only thing that's left to do is to run the positive power wire through the cab, wire the switch, and then back to the horn, but it's f***ing cold. So we're gonna go inside and warm up because I can't really move my hands anymore, but. Well, we've warmed up a little bit. We've decided we're gonna run the wire through kind of the fender and then back and around through this little gap here, and then we'll go in through this door seal boot up under the dash and then we pop this dash panel out and I'll drill a hole in it for the momentary switch. Now we're just trying to feed the wire through that in this little tiny gap. It's being a little bit difficult but 
once we get that in, then we can loop it through here. And I've got the button installed on the dash panel, so we're pretty close. Well, we just turned the ignition on, and you can hear the compressor running. You can hear it filling up the tank, too. So as soon as that stops, we'll go ahead and give the horn a try. Well, we've got an air leak, and it's from the compressor line into the tank, so we got to fix that. I think if we can just get that to stop leaking, we're going to be in good shape. <laughs> well, we've got a couple problems. One is the pump, like, barely is charging the compressor, so we're not, the pump's not strong enough to, to make the compressor have enough pressure in it to shut it off. So it's like nuclear hot, so we got that going for us. The next thing is the solenoid on the fucking horn is bad, so every time you hit the button, it shorts it out and blows the fuse. So I gotta get a new solenoid and I gotta get a new compressor pump, which is bull because it came out of the box like that, so yeah. After that defeat, we decided to call it a day, and we ordered replacement parts, and they came about a week later. Hey guys, well we're back after about a week. I have got my replacement air compressor and tank in the mail the other day. So today is a nice day actually. It's not snowing or anything like that. So I think we're gonna try and get this wrapped up. We're just gonna pull the old tank and compressor out and put the new one in. We'll leave the wiring and stuff cause then it'll just swap right in. And then as far as the solenoid goes, I ordered a new one of those. It should be here in a little bit, but we're gonna take the solenoid out and see if maybe there's just something that's bound up in there and maybe we can get it to work. At least a couple tries, so. Anyways, that's what we're gonna do today, so. Should be fun. So, we're looking to test this air solenoid to try and see if it's working properly or not. Basically, what we can do to do that is we've got a 12 volt car battery here, and we're just gonna apply 12 volts to the solenoid to see if it clicks. And you hear that clicking sound, that's the solenoid actuator. So we know that it's actually moving back and forth now. The same way we tested this air solenoid, you can also test an electric solenoid. If you can hear it clicking when you apply 12 volts, chances are it's probably working properly. It is uh, something to be said too that before we did that, I took a hammer and hit the solenoid a couple of times. Uh, a lot of times those solenoid contacts will get sticky and, and they'll kind of, they just won't move properly. Um, so we just got in there with a hammer and hit it a few times and now it seems like it's it's actuating correctly So hopefully when we put this horn back in the solenoid will you know Continue to work continue to work if not I got a new one coming so That little thing right there So we've got all this removed um, we, DJ and I were kind of talking and trying to figure out how we could save a little bit more space and DJ had the great idea of mounting the compressor to the horn bracket in here. It looks like that's gonna fit. So that should give us a little bit more space. Um, when we were just running it the other day, it was pretty loud because it was sitting in the battery tray just vibrating. Uh, they do come with some rubber grommets and stuff. So we're thinking if we put that in there, use the rubber grommets and then actually mount the tank correctly instead of just leaving it in there, it won't be so noisy. So I think we're on our way and I think we're doing a professional install. Yeah, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Well, we've got the compressor mounted on the, I guess the horn bracket now. Next thing I want to try and figure out is how we can mount this tank into the either the battery tray or to the side of the fender so that it doesn't vibrate either. And then once we get that done, we can just reinstall it and hopefully all the wiring works like it should and the solenoid stays working and we'll be on our way. Well, we've got everything installed now. Everything's wired up, so we're going to go ahead and turn the truck on and hopefully the compressor kicks off if it's supposed to because that's the whole reason we needed a new one. That compressor's a lot quieter now that we've got those mounts on there so we're just hoping that slowly it'll turn off and I can kind of hear some air leak somewhere so we'll have to get that figured out but hopefully it's building pressure a lot faster than the other one did so I think we're we're looking good winning well that solved our problem we've got plenty of pressure it kicked off it got the high pressure switch so man we are in business look at that so now I'm gonna hook the horn up uh, to the positive we've got here and hopefully we can get some sound out of this bad boy. All right, well, we got the horn rewired up. Well, this here's the moment of truth. We're gonna turn the truck on and push the button. And if it goes off, it means that hitting the solenoid with the hammer worked. And if it doesn't, and it blows the fuse, we know that we need a new solenoid. So here goes nothing. Ah, oh, it barely worked. I think that it just blew it. Damn it. You could hear a little toot though. Let's see if our fuse is blown, and it is. I'm just gonna step it up to the biggest one we have, 30. 
that's what's up. All right, let's see. Ah, I blew it. It needs a new solenoid. Son of a bitch. Well, I guess we're gonna have to stop here for today, but at least we got the compressor working like it should. And uh, we'll just have to install that solenoid when it comes in the mail, so. Well, I did take the old one out so that when the new one gets here, I can just drop it in. Hopefully it's that simple. This thing is junk. Well, it's been, I don't know, probably three weeks and my solenoid finally showed up. It got lost in the mail, but it's here. A little cheapy thing off of Amazon. So we're gonna go ahead and install it. We're gonna put some thread sealer on here uh, just to make sure that we don't get any leaks with the air uh, that goes on the horn side. And then we're just gonna hook it up and I'm really hoping that this works. If for some reason this doesn't, uh, we're still blowing fuses and things like that, it probably means that the switch has gone bad. Typically, if you're blowing fuses, it's not gonna be from a switch because they're really, it's a really simple mechanism. So anyways, we're gonna put this on. We're gonna hope for the best. We put some thread sealer on there, rewired the solenoid, and we were ready to go. But I guess we can test the horn. There's enough pressure in there, so. So I guess now we'll just let the compressor run for a little while and uh, maybe check for some leaks. But I think for now it's a win. So we do have an air leak on the solenoid right there and it's pretty good. Like if I put my finger there, I can feel the air coming out of there. So I'm guessing that's enough of a leak that it's not gonna let the compressor kick off. So we'll pull that fitting off. We'll put some thread sealer on it, put it back on there and then hopefully it'll actually kick off. Well, our compressor has kicked off. We fixed that leak. I think we can put a wrap on this project. What was that shit? That was very flamboyant. <laughs> what the? Well, so we decided to go out and do a little bit of a drive test. I wanted to test to make sure that when you actually triggered the horn that the compressor kicked on and then kicks off. So we'll give it two little blasts here. You can, <laughs> you can tell it's 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 fairly loud it'll be a little bit louder with the 150 but i think there's the compressor it kicked on so here in probably 20 seconds i would think the compressor will turn off and the way that that works is that switch in there is basically based off of pressure so if you honk the horn and the pressure in the tank gets below i think it's 85 degree or 85 pounds per square inch in the tank it tells the compressor to kick on and the compressor charges the tank until it gets to about 105, which is what the switch is rated at. And then it tells the compressor to turn off or it opens the switch. And the compressor just turned off. So I'm gonna call that a successful install. I think I'm gonna put a 150 uh, pound switch on it just to get a little bit more air in the tank as well as I think it'll make it a little bit louder. This horn's rated at like 152 decibels at 150 pounds. So uh, from what I was reading in the comment section uh, and the reviews from this compressor, it sounds like it'll actually charge the tank to 150. So I'm gonna go ahead and call that a win. This project is installed. Very nice. Is that copyrighted? <laughs> it, but Kazakhstan does not recognize copyright. This install was frustrating to say the least. Most of the frustration comes from getting defective parts right out of the box. Later on, I did install a 150 pound pressure switch and it made the horn significantly louder. So if you're going to do this project, I highly recommend that. Well guys, we successfully installed a train horn on my GMC Sierra. It took a little bit of troubleshooting and some replacement parts, but we got it working good and I'm pretty excited about it. We'll see you next time on Tools with Tools. I don't want to take my gloves off, so go fuck yourself. Yeah. Boop, boop, boop.